Hello, I'm Zardis, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program 2. Today is the launch day, or at least the, the day that I'm releasing this video is the launch day, so if you're watching this in the future, then you've probably got other stuff. And today I want to show you how to get a rocket to orbit Kerbal. And uh, just a couple of notes here. This game, as of recording, is in very early abscess. This is the very first version of the game, so it's possible that things have changed by the time you see this video. If they have, and I've made an updated version of this video, then be sure to click in the top right corner. There should be a link to one now. If not, then keep watching. So a couple of things have changed, but uh, for the most part, if you've played Kerbal before, then you'll be very familiar with how we do this. So let's go ahead. This is the Kerbal Space Center, and you'll notice that we have more launch pads, we have multiple runways now, and we have other stuff. There's only one game mode at the time of recording, which is Sandbox. So everything is unlocked. I'm sure at some point there will be career mode and science mode that will not have everything unlocked at first. But let's go ahead and jump in to building a rocket here. Okay, so here we are in the vehicle assembly building, and uh, you know, it looks different than it did in the first one. You've got pretty much, I mean, this is all very similar to what we had before. We've got a menu with different uh, parts that you can use and stuff like that. You have a different workspace orientation. You can change how things are. You can see your center of thrust, center of mass, center of pressure. You can change your symmetry mode, which we'll talk about in a minute, and snap, and other views and things that you can do there as well. Uh, what I find most important is the, let's see, it is the trip planner. This can come in and you can tell it that we want to go from Kerbin to, we actually want to be Kerbin. Uh, nope, that's where we are. Okay, one way trip. We're just going to do this. We want to see Kerbin low orbit. We need 3400 delta V. That is the speed at which we need to have our vessel going in order to uh, escape. Well, we need that. That's how much, uh, I don't know, power, energy. I, I'm not a scientist. I don't know the official terms. I just know that we need 3400 delta V to escape low orbit. And then we can come to engineer's report. And once we have stuff in here, we'll be able to see what we're doing. So first we want to build a little pod. We want to take a Kerbal to space. So the pod is what will be in there. And that is our command module. You can have different command modules. You could do a probe, you could do other stuff, but I want to send somebody up there. So we're going to do a small pod. And then we want to make sure that we can get back safely. So we're going to use a extra small MK-16 parachute on the top there. And then we are going to use a thermal... Let's see, where is that? Thermal. We want a small heat shield so that we don't overheat on the way in. And that's all we need for re-entry. Down here, you can see that we have one stage. Stages are different parts of your rocket that you have at different points in time. And we're going to add more to that. So once we're up into orbit, well, first of all, we need a coupler. A coupler will detach anything below it from the rocket. So when we're ready, we will detach everything below this. And what we want then is we want a fuel tank. We'll get this one. And then we want an engine, and we'll go ahead with the swivel engine here. And with that, we should have enough, once we're up into space, we should have enough power that we can then uh, go from there. And we want to see, yeah, it should be engineer's report. Okay, here we go. This shows our delta V down at the bottom, and if we click on launch, we'll go to the launch pad, but I want to push on this arrow, and that brings it out and shows the delta V at different stages. So we have 1500 delta V with this engine up here. So if we can get up to orbit, we're gonna have plenty of power. And in fact, we can probably take this engine off, or this fuel tank off, put it back over here, and we're going to grab a smaller fuel tank, Let's go, this was the one that we, no, that is not the one we had, I think. 
Yeah, okay, that was the one we had. So we want to bring this back over here. We want to trash it. And we want a smaller one because we don't need that much delta V. There we have 914. That should be plenty to get his uh, to slow down and get us back down to Kerbal. And then what we'll do is we'll get a coupler. And now that is our stage there. So what we want to do, I'm going to bring this back over and we want to drag the coupler up. So it's in that same stage. So when we uh, fire or hit the space bar to change from one coupler to the next, then we will switch and that engine will immediately start firing. Which, you know, now that I'm thinking of it, I do want more fuel. I want to make sure that we have a lot of fuel up there. So that should give us how much delta V? 1569. So now we want to make sure we can get up to space. So what I'm going to do is we'll get another rocket down here and we're going to just go big. Go big or go home, right? So now we've got 3900. And we can see if we are, yeah, that's the different launch pads that we can launch from. We're at 2300 from that first stage, which will not be enough to get us all the way up to orbit, which is why we're going to fire that and we'll get up into a uh, close to orbit. And then we'll use this one to get us the rest of the way. And I think that should work. Then we need a little bit of stability to this. So we're going to go down to aerodynamics. And what I like to do, I'm going to go to stabilizer. We'll use the, this one, I believe. Yeah, that should work. And if we hit EPS, you can see our symmetry is changing. I'm going to put four of these on here like that. And now we've got four symmetrical ones on, which should be good. And the other thing to note is that you can change the color of your rocket now. We could go to, say we could have a red rocket and change it like that. That is cool. And then you can have a second one, say red and yellow. That is a pretty cool rocket there. Although I'm, I really like blue. So I'm going to put it back to, no, I want the base here. I'll figure this out. Get the blue and then the absent. That can be a, a yellow. Blue and yellow. All right. So we're going to do that. And that went to the whole assembly. And then once you're done with your color, you can switch back to selection tool. Okay, so I think we're about ready. What I want to do next is make sure that we have a, a Kerbal in here. And it has selected Bob, which I think will be, be okay. And we will go from there. So now we're ready to launch. We're going to launch from launch pad one. And let's go and get to the launch pad. So now that we are at the launch pad, our view is a little bit different. We've got our rocket here on the launch pad and we have a giant nav ball, which in the original game was small and in the center. Now it's off to the left. So you can have presumably so you can have more of a view of what you're doing while still having this. A few things to note. This on the left is our level of thrust that we're using from our liquid engine or our um, yeah liquid fuel engine our solid fuel booster the one on the bottom is just going to burn at full blast and this one we can control how much we uh, how, how much power we're using with that liquid fuel once we're on that stage then we have our surface level of speed we have our altitude here we have the direction that we're heading and then we have SAS control, which is this thing here. And right now we can select where we're going. We want to just do uh, these ones here. We want to lock stability. And then we can change what we're focusing when we're up in space or when, when we're flying. This shows what type of atmosphere you're in. Right now we're in the thickest, so we're here and eventually we'll be up into space. And then this is your vertical speed. So those are important things to pay attention to down here. This is very helpful too. AP is your apoapsis. That is the top of your orbit. And PE is your periapsis, which will be the bottom of your or the lowest point of your orbit. And this shows how soon you will reach both of those. But I think we're pretty much ready. This is for uh, your time warp. These are different views. You can open the map or the tracking station. 
And these are different parts managers and things that you can look at. Like these are the different parts in your uh, your thing. This is the flight report telling you about different things. And then this is just a few other additional options that you have. So let's go ahead and we are going to hit launch. You can hit the space bar to go ahead or you can hit go. So now they've added a countdown. You can watch that and it, it makes it cool takeoff or you can just skip it. We're going to go ahead with it and here we go. Now I'm going to use the WASD keys to control where we're going. We're going to do what's called gravity turn starting about now. And we want to get this heading. We want to stay to about 90 degrees, but we want to get the nav ball a little bit more turned so that we're going more at an angle and that will make our launch more efficient and use up less delta v otherwise we won't be able to do this but it is important if you need more information and you have the game the training center is a great place to get little tutorials or lessons about how um, the science behind all of this works i'm not going to get into that i'm just going to show you how i'm doing it so in a moment I'm watching our fuel here. We're going to lose our fuel. We're trying to get our gravity turn in. And we want to make sure our apoapsis is up over 70, which it is. So I'm going to kill the liquid engine. And once we run out of fuel on this, we're going to lose the booster. There we go. So we've lost that booster. That can go back down. And in the meantime, we are going to be heading up to space. And if we switch to the map view by hitting M, we're coming down here to map. You can see what we've got. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on our AP, our apoapsis. We're going to create a maneuver point. And we want to click on it and add to the prograde here. The prograde is how much forward momentum you're doing. I, that's how I'm going to describe it. And we're going to add that until our periapsis is in orbit, which it doesn't really show me the details of that. So we're going to guess here. But if we do that until the periapsis comes back around, that should circularize our orbit and turn it into a circle. So that should be more than enough here. And we need 1500 delta V for that. So actually, we're going to go a little bit lower because I don't think we need that much there. This should be plenty because that apoapsis is at 197. We're going to try to preserve some of our delta V so that we have plenty to get back down. This should work here, I think. So that'll take 1385. We've got 1569. So that will be good. Then what we can do. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we're following this. And in two and a half minutes, we're going to want to start to burn. And to do that, we're going to want to have our SAS control on maneuver. So now we are up in space. We're going to change our, our orientation to be at the maneuver. And so we're going to make sure that when it comes time to fire that rocket, we're going to be firing it in the right direction. And so now we're ready. We can hit this button here, warp to maneuver, and we can fast forward. So it speeds it up until you're about 30 seconds away from that maneuver. And then it slows it back down so that the game can uh, adjust your direction here. And we're going to make sure that we are on that maneuver. It is moving that just a little bit. And when that goes, we want to make sure that we fire. And then it will tell us how long until we need to stop our burn? So in the five, four, three, two, one, fire those rockets. And it is going to burn this for a while. Hopefully we have that fuel that we need. We might not actually, but we're gonna watch this periapsis and it is going to get us once that is above 70, we can kill it and we will be in an orbit. But we want to make sure we have enough fuel to land. There we go. So I killed the engine a little bit before we needed to, but we have enough in the orbit so that we can we will be orbiting the planet. So now we can delete that maneuver 
and we can check the map again and we can see our new trajectory this blue one is going to take us all the way around periapsis is 82 uh, kilometers and apoapsis is 205 so we're going to go around and around and around and in fact we could switch now back to this view and we can speed up the time warp and we can see our ship going over and over or all the way around we went under a hundred uh 100 kilometers so it slowed down the time warp you can only go so fast when you're under 100 kilometers but we can go around and around over and over again and we're not going to fall because we are orbiting the planet so now the next thing we want to do is try to land so we're going to slow this down so we can make our maneuver we want to try to land as close to the space center as possible so we are going to come over here and click at our apoapsis. And when we create a maneuver here, we're going to change our periapsis. And so we're going to click on this and we're going to add retrograde, which is the one that will slow us down. And we want to do that until, let's make sure we're clicking on the right thing here. We want that retrograde to have us coming down somewhere over here, just maybe a little bit more here. And that should get us in the water by the space station. So that will take 124 Delta V and we should be able to do that. So now we will go back in here. We wanna make sure that we are pointed to the maneuver. You can see how great the planet looks with this new version of the game. It is beautiful and it, I'm sure it's not even polished all the way because we're in early abscess but we can go ahead and we are going to warp to the maneuver now okay and we're going to want to make sure that we are pointed at the maneuver node we are and then we will fire this we shouldn't have to fire it very long we'll see just in a little bit how long we need to go Okay, starting the burn in five, four, three, two, one, burning. Okay, we overshot a tiny bit there. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, we're gonna land in the in the ground. So what I wanna do is I wanna go to retrograde. I made a mistake there, so I'm just going to correct it by burning just a little bit more here with shift. And oh no, wait. Okay, yeah, so this one is our target, but this is where, here, let's take this back out. That actually is gonna be perfect. That's where it is saying that we're going to land. So we're going to come back in here. We want to be pointing at retrograde but what I want to do next is we're going to switch to SAS control locked because what we want to do is jettison this engine. But I want to be a little bit closer to the ground before we do that. So we're going to go ahead a tiny bit here, move a little closer. And maybe we'll, do, we'll, we'll point to retrograde real quick. And then we'll speed up so that we're keeping that good orientation. We, you want to be retrograde going in because you'll want to have that heat shield pointing the right way. Once we get below 100 kilometers, I'm going to jettison this. Okay, so now we're at a point. I'm going to turn this to lock. And I just want to turn and try to get this to be in a direction that will put this away from us. There we go. So I'm going to hit the space bar now, which will put us on the next stage. And now that engine is gone, we're going to switch to retrograde and let the, let the pod hold its own spot. And now we should be coming in. I'm going to check the map again to make sure that we're still in the good spot. And we are, and we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, watch this landing. So at this point, we are starting to reach the thicker, uh, like parts of the atmosphere. And so now our uh, 
pod is going to be slowing down and you can see the space center right over there we're going to land really close which will be really good because if you were playing career mode it would be a cheap recovery for your vessel but of course we're insane bot so that doesn't matter all that much but it is good to be in good practice of landing near your space center and in a little bit we are going to fire that parachute but first be sure if you are in the market for a new gaming pc go to my uh line at apex gaming pcs there's a link in the comments below and uh, in the video description and you can get a discount by using the code zardis at checkout and yeah i really appreciate it it would help to support the channel as well but only if you're in the mood or not in the mood but in the in the market for a new gaming pc and if you want one that can run this game really well then that would be a great place to go now we are nearing the point where we want to fire that or let that parachute go i'd like to do it when we're below 300 meters per second and we're approaching that and maybe when we get into the thicker atmosphere as well so we're at the point now that that i think we could fire it we'll go ahead and do that now hitting the space bar so that parachute comes up and now when it gets into a an even thicker spot or like closer to the ground it will get bigger and slow us down even more but let's go ahead and time warp ahead and there we are we've gotten the bigger parachute we are now going only eight meters per second seven meters per second and we've got a little bit further to go before we splash down so we'll continue here and you can see the water is very, very nice there. Graphics are nice on this one. And even if you zoom in, it looks very clear. You can even see in the window. You can't see it very well here. They've got it blocked right now. But oh, look, we've splashed down. Very good. We are in the water. And the next thing to do is to hit escape. And then you can go to recover vessel. So now we can confirm the recovery and then we get our flight report. Vessel launched, vessel landed, vessel recovered, and we orbited the planet. So that is how you do an orbit. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, on the screen, there will be a video that you will enjoy. So click on it and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.